Welcome to Toradex office here in Seattle. Today we will talk about Verdin, our new system on module. My name is Daniel Lang and I'm the CMO of Toradex. Uh, today here with me I have uh, Samuel Ingris. Hey Nicola, thanks for coming by. Yeah, my name is Samuel, I'm the CEO of Toradex and today we really talk a little bit about on the hardware side what we have new for you guys. So we've actually been working for the last new months on a new and third module family. So most of you guys are actually familiar with our uh, Colibri form factor. So if we quickly look back here, we have, uh, this is a 15 year old form factor that we're still maintaining today. Our most successful product family, the Colibri family. And then we introduced about si six years ago, the Apollis family. This is really a high performance ARM system module family. And today we're gonna talk a little bit about our new Verdin system module family. So like all other product families from Tordex, we're developing system of modules that are pin compatible within the family. So today we're introducing the first SOM of the Verdin system of module family. And this one is based on the IMX 8M mini processor. We're also gonna be offering a custom variant based on the 8M nano, which is a pin compatible processor. So typically on the SOM, you will have a processor, system memory, flash, all the power controls, wireless connectivity, and typical some of the high-speed peripherals like a gigabit Ethernet 5. But then what you usually need is a carrier board to really develop the custom part of your embedded system. But I'd like to let Brandon talk a little about really what we had in mind when we came up with our new um, Verdin family. Yeah, so I'm Brandon Shibley, CTO of Tordex. And um, so when we designed Verdin, um, you know, what we were doing is bringing out some higher speed interfaces um, than some of our previous products. Um, you know, Calibri is a 15 year old uh, family. With Verdin, we're uh, bringing out interfaces that like such as USB 3.0, uh, gigabit ethernet, uh, PCI Express, uh, MIPI DSI and MIPI CSI. And um, we're doing that on a higher density connector here, 260 pins on, on this connector. Um, and so this is the development board that we created. Um, this is the board you'll work with uh, when you're developing a product um, with our uh, Verdin system on module. You can see it uh, connects in just like this. Um, this is, allows you to access most of the pins on the connector uh, through these headers, as well as any of the other interfaces um, through various connectors and transceivers. Uh, so we have things like, um, you know, the dual Ethernet that we talked about. This is um, one Ethernet provided uh, by the SOM where there's a, a PHY provided on board. The second provided over RGMII with a, another PHY here. So we have uh, two Ethernet th that are possible here. Um, we have PCI Express. Um, here we're bringing out the uh, MIPI DSI. And Many of the, the new SOCs coming out are supporting MIPI DSI well, um, whereas other display interfaces aren't so universally supported across all those SOCs. So we find that um, you know, it's gonna be easier to support many of those um, interfaces over MIPI DSI with various adapters. And so that's what we're um, showing here is that uh, provide adapters such as this, which adapt from MIPI DSI to HDMI. Um, we also have like CAN RS-485 or RS-232. Um, those are provi provided over the UARTs of the connector. Um, we have native HDMI, um, MIPI CSI here, USB uh, on the go, and um, a variety of other interfaces. We have many type specific interfaces also where we've dedicated some of the pins of the module for um, interfaces which are really um, as, uh, SOM specific, so things that are not universally supported across all of the products, and those are accessible over the connector here on the development board. So that's uh, that's about uh, everything we've done here with Verdin. I'll uh, pass it on to Daniel. Yeah, so we talked a lot about hardware, which is of course very important, very important part to make your hardware and design easier. But uh, Toradex is not just about hardware, we do a lot about software. So if you get the Verdin module, you tap into the whole Toradex ecosystem. So it means you get that uh, famous support uh, you're used to. 
Um, you get all the software, so you get Yocto, BSPs, you also get our new Horizon, easy to use Linux uh, distribution uh, for industrial application, and that's uh, supported on Verdin from day one. And with Horizon, we have a whole ecosystem of partners such as Codices, uh, Crank, Qt, and many more providing uh, containers. So it's very easy to get started, very easy to install that. It's designed for easy updatability. Today, everybody's connected. You need to be able to update your software easy on the system. And, and so we do all of that. We also have an uh, ecosystem of system integrators. So if you can't design your own carrier board, we have partner, proven partner, who specialize in doing own carrier boards, uh, do a design for you, or we have other partners having off-the-shelf carrier boards uh, ready when that comes to market, where we can just plug in the module. Same thing on the, on the software side. Uh, we have system integrator, you need cloud connectivity, you need anything special that can help you uh, get started fast and lower your, your time to market. So there's a lot of customer feedback you've gotten uh, to implement. Basically, it's like the next gen of Toradex, right? Yeah. So we, before we do that, we did really uh, extensive market research. We looked at a lot of different things. We looked at different connector. We took a very detailed look at board to board connector. We looked at soldable solution. And, and we really decide that's the best for our target market, our customer need uh, vibration proof. Uh, they need cost optimized, uh, they, they need easy assembly, so they don't have sometimes the technology to do a deal with extremely fine pitch, all of that. We included all of that, we did a lot of research about which interfaces they need, and um, that's basically the outcome of that. And we did the same thing on the software side with Horizon, so we are very confident that that's a good solution. And we are also very welcome you know, for input, uh, you know, to add additional uh, software features um, and, and so on. So it's, uh, uh, it's could, would you say future-proof also in terms of what the trends are? Yes, it's, it's very future-proof. It's really designed with uh, Outlook as Colibri, for example, is around from 2005. And we're still supporting that. We're still bringing out uh, new products there. And uh, same for here. So we already we will launch with, with two uh, SOCs, as Samuel mentioned, iMix 8M Mini and iMix 8M Nano. And we already have a roadmap with, with more chips coming out in, in the same form factor. So you will get the same scalability uh, you are used to uh, from our other families. And with the new uh, over-DA updates and the system and the whole Horizon, it's, um, it's a s new way of doing providing support. Exactly. With, with the, oh, so it's future-proof on the hardware side, but it's definitely future-proof on the software side. Uh, with Horizon, with a, a stronger focus on, on connected devices, on security. Uh, we, of course, also will have a real-time patch, uh, as, as you used to be. You know, you have heterogeneous multi-core here with M4 cores, which will be integrated. We have tooling to make it easy to get started. We have plugins for Visual Studio. We su support Visual Studio code. We invest a lot in also bringing Python on board, which we see uh, some people are beginning to use in embedded industries um, and so on. So this is also going to en enable even more in, it, in the labs, more and uh, more stuff. Is yes, of now. course, on, on the labs, we continue to innovate. We continue to try out new things. We have uh, tools like Flash uh, tool, which gives you an estimate about your Flash lifetime and, and a lot of other additional features uh, uh, we, we develop in, in labs. Yeah, I, I can also, we talked about our ecosystem. We, of course, it's provider of additional feature value added, but we also have a very close connection uh, with our suppliers uh, like uh, NXP. And we have here uh, today uh, Jerome from NXP. And you can introduce yourself and he will talk a little bit about what kind of problems we like to solve together and why Toradex works so close uh, with NXP. Hi, thanks for having me today. I'm Jerome Shang with NXP. I have responsibility for our cloud partnership programs. And so what here we're trying to solve our real customer problems in places where we are decentralizing typical cloud machine learning workloads down to the edge. So if you look at what has been done here with Toradex, uh, NXP is working with AWS to enable their operating system and runtime. NXP is working with Toradex to enable computer vision at the edge. As we blend the three of them together, you essentially have a way to 
manage the lifecycle and onboarding of the, the device. You also have a way to train model, deploy model, and reiterate. And so that typically is a task that was cloud-based in the past, now moving to the edge. So what we're solving here is that typical um, machine learning model in the cloud is as efficient as how much power you can throw at it. Machine learning model at the edge is as efficient as self-contained you can remain and how much can be executed on the device. So SageMaker Neo, which is in our case the ML framework we're using, is especially efficient in the auto-tuning feature that allows the Toradex model to run efficiently at the edge. And this is where you see the strength and power of ARM-based computing compared to non-cost-effective x86-based platform to take advantage of the power, cost, and performance areas that are typical of ARM-based computing right now. ARM-based computing is a lot to do with efficiency, right? And you have all this uh, power out there. It's nice to use it, to, to find new ways to use all this, the, the CPU power and, and do all this machine learning with it. Mm -hmm. So uh, you will see uh, in that specific context that the work done around the ARM compute library is bearing fruits in places where the typical execution provider or the actual runtime environment choose which function is best accelerated and or executed either on the CPU or the GPU. And so that's the specialty of uh, SageMaker Neo which is auto-tuning feature that allows us to choose which is the best uh, function run on which accelerator. Many people in this industry uh, choose NXP for the, the open source, uh, the availability of lots of open source stuff around it, right? It's, uh, it's one of the important things. Correct. So if, if you look at the, the reason why people would go to NXP, it's first and foremost because of the breadth of the portfolio, because you can find the right devices that meets uh, the performance and cost of your specific application. Then when you look at what we upstream to the open source community, you'll find all the plumbing to actually accelerate uh, edge-based machine learning and uh, the different uh, partners that we have in the ecosystem to actually accelerate the development for end users. It's here again about easing the customer journey in their development and the development with Toradex is definitely speeding up time to market. And you even have sometimes some of the GPU in the open source support and stuff like that when people want to do that. Or it's something that's in development a lot, right? Correct. So we are currently trying to balance uh, GPU workloads, neural accelerator workloads. And so the work we're doing with our partners is uh, enabling OpenVX APIs for that matter. And so you will see a whole fleet of product coming with neural accelerators that we will introduce at CES this year. Nice. And uh, this enables so many new applications. So many new startups should just be watching and do, making stuff, making new, new ideas. Uh, our uh, specialty is bringing workloads at the edge. So you will hear NXP being very efficient at the edge in places where we are trying to get you to more cost-effective solution than typical x86 architecture in order for you to start balancing workloads in order to actually distribute those end nodes, manage your life cycle in a secure fashion, correct. Nice. So, uh, so you, you are definitely getting more and more busy with all these solutions, right? Uh, yeah, it's uh, going very well. We see, you know, a, a lot developing, as I said, and he points out, you know, we're moving uh, into edge compute. Machine learning is a, is a big topic, so there is open, like, embedded vision. So there's a, a lot of new opportunities coming, of course, the whole IoT, the whole connectivity, a lot of new challenges uh, where Toradex can help you uh, solve and bring you faster to market.